he hit that the little one. He hit it two times and missed it. Finally got him. Is it crappie? No, it's a bass. I thought it might be a crappie since he hit it a couple times and I missed him. Woo! Perfect. That's kind of the way I want to talk to you. Catch them on a crankbait like that to get all the fun out of them and then turn them loose out the boat. We're going to talk a little bit about crankbaits, give you some secrets about crankbait fishing to make you a better crankbait fisherman. And I've got a little American Original Deep Smoothie on this, a Lucky Strike bait made right here in uh, America in uh, Greenwood, Arkansas. That's a, a, a bluegill color. That's one of my favorite colors right there. It's got orange and chartreuse on it. It's got a little grayish, bluish purple uh, on the back of it. It's just absolutely a perfect bait. Razor sharp hooks. I do have the barbed smash down, so uh, I just like to fish with barbless hooks. Let's see what we can do with it. And we'll talk about how to catch more fish on a crankbait. Yeah. One of the key things to, that you got to figure out on crankbaits is, is how deep they're running. No matter what kind of crankbait you're fishing with, you want to figure out how deep they're running. Now, if you've got a forward-facing phone sonar, that's going to be a real easy deal to do because all you got to do is throw it out there, crank it in, and watch it on your locator and see how deep it goes. As an example, now I've got this on 20-pound, maybe 17, 17 or 20-pound test line, maybe 15, anywhere, pretty heavy line. I've got it on pretty heavy line. It's going to go a lot deeper if you got it on 12, a lot deeper if you got it on 10 or 8. The lighter the line, the deeper your crankbait's going to go, whether it's a square bill or a round bill, either one. The lighter your line, the deeper it's going to go. This is pretty heavy line. So all I want to do now, if I've got a, a forward-facing sonar, is I'm simply going to get out here, chunk that thing right square out in front of the boat, and let my, let my forward-facing sonar face toward it, and then wind that thing back in, but I got interrupted with a fish. I'm sorry about that. I was going to, oh, it's a tiny, tiny fish, not much bigger than the bait. That's okay. That's all right. I like them all. I take them all. All right, we're going to throw that thing out there right square in front of the boat and make sure we're pointed right to it. I've got the one on my trolling motor. I've got a right height turret. It's pointed up there too, so it's probably going to show up on both of them. But I'm going to wind that thing right back to the boat. And I got a little grass on it right there, but I'm looking down there and seeing it's coming in right on the six foot line. It's exactly on the six foot line. So this little crankbait on the line I have on here, which I believe is 20 pound test, on the line I have on here, run six foot deep, real simple. So now that you know that, you correlate that to everything else you're fishing. If you want it to run deep, simply get your rod that's got 10 or 12 pound test line on it, tie it on there, throw it out there and see what it is. Whatever pound test line you have on is going to be a big factor in how deep your bait is running. So once you figure that out, then you know about, what, about where you are. Now, as we look out here, we're out here in 14 foot of water. There's a bite right That might have been a tree. fish it's a big one <laughs> no it's grass uh, as I look out here it looks like it looks like I might be seeing I'm not I might be seeing down around 14 or 15 feet which is about where the bottom is I might be seeing a thermocline now if you see in a thermocline if you don't see a thermocline there is either not a thermocline and we have thermoclines a lot in the fall this time of the year we have thermoclines a lot if you're not seeing a thermocline, by the way, a thermocline is a three degree change in water temperature down at whatever depth the thermocline is happening. The amazing thing is it shows up on your fish finder. And uh, so I'm looking down there, I'm moving out a little bit deeper water and I move out to 15 feet. Yes, I can see that thermocline and it's down about 14. So now I've got a bait that's only running six foot deep. So it's not gonna get anywhere close to that thermocline. And quite honestly, Quite honestly, probably most of the fish will be about 10 to 14 foot deep. They'll be right above that thermocline. So I've got a bait that's only going to run about six. So that's not really the best thing to be throwing. You see what I'm saying? It's not the very best thing. Now I may get around some trees and some grass and things where the fish might be shallower, but probably if I was fishing a tournament, I'd move to a crankbait that goes deeper. Either that or put this one on eight pound test line. Eight pound test line probably get me to eight or nine foot with this bait. There he is, there he is, right there. Whoa, that's a good one. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. He hit it on the stop, like what I was talking about, stop it. That's a good fish. Don't you come unbutton, I wanna look at you. Yes, I wanna look at you. Now, if it's in a tournament, I get down there and get a hold of that fish. But if he gets off, he gets off. I don't really care. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty one right there. That's a good fish. Be careful with crankbaits because of the treble hooks. Always pick them up easy. He was hooked with one little treble. They put great hooks on these deep smoothies. That's my favorite crankbait right there. One treble is all that had him. That's a really nice fat fish. 
two and three quarter pounds of beauty. And I mean, he fought like crazy too. Now, here's one thing I'm definitely gonna do. Catch a fish on a crankbait, go right back in there. Go right back in there. Make four or five more casts right where you caught, caught them. Always do that. Sometimes in tournaments, you hear these guys in tournaments, I had an hour to go and had two fish left. There's another in the exact same spot. Exactly what I was, I come off. That's another good one too. That one come off. Had two fish with 30 minutes to go in the tournament, hit one spot and caught three big ones and then caught another big one and called one. And they walk up there and look at that water's boiling on top of the water where I lost that fish. And I said, golly. There was at least two there, wasn't there? Peeking and stopping and going to the crankbait. You can do a lot of that with sweeping your rod tip too. If you get where you have a hard time stopping, just sweep your rod tip and move back toward it every now and then. Now, those of you that like to turn your reel handle like I do, you can put a lot of different action on the crankbait doing that as well. Now here's something else that's very, very critical, crankbait fishing. In fact, I believe it's critical anything you're fishing. If you wind that thing in, you didn't get a bite, you got your bait up kind of close to the boat, pause and stop that thing down there before it starts moving up. Many times there's a bass behind it. Many times that stop right there that you do, cranking that crankbait in, we'll crank fast, we'll change speed, we'll stop, we'll do whatever out there. We're gonna crank that thing in. We'll get up here close to the boat, stop that thing, when you think it's starting to, before it starts to come back up, stop it. If there's a bass behind it, when you stop it, a lot of times you catch that fish. I like. Come here, baby. Ooh, nice one. Ooh, a nice one. Boy, he just sucked that thing in. I thought for a second it was grass. Then it wiggled on one end. Ooh, he's wiggling on both ends now. He swallowed that bait. Oh, no, he didn't. Either. He's hooked pretty good, I think. I'm on the swing him. Dangerous. Oh, he's only hooked with one hook now. <laughs> he's in the boat now, so don't matter how he's hooked. <laughs> in fact, if he come unhooked, it'd be good. I want to really get a tight grip on them when they've got those trebles in them. Because you definitely don't want those trebles in your hand. Even with barbless, they hurt. That's a really nice fish right there. Now, I've just felt some grass right before I hit that. And then when, I, when the fish sucked it in, it was such a subtle hit that it really felt like, it really felt like I just was in the grass again. And when I kind of picked up on it to jerk the grass off, I felt the fish and just went ahead and set the hook. That's another thing, when you, when you have a little, I think you might have a little grass on your hook because the wiggle changed a little bit. When you make that hard jerk like that to get the grass off, if it does happen to be a fish, if it does happen to be the fish, you set the hook on the fish. So that's another thing about that technique. And I gotta tell you, many, many times over my lifetime, I've hit that jerk to knock the bait, up, knock the grass off the bait, and it wasn't grass on the bait, it was a fish. And there's another one right there. Down here in this little channel. See how he was jerking around on that thing. Oh man, that's a pretty nice fish. Oh yeah, good fish. Come here, baby. Up here in this boat with me. <laughs> Woohoo! Right here before dark. What a great time to be fishing. Right here before dark. Again, barely, barely. Look how they're hooked right on the edge of the lips. That's dangerous when you hook them out there. That's definitely, definitely a situation. Hey, I may have a little school found right here. One of the things about the fall of the year, these fish, when they're still out, in their haunts and haven't moved to the mouths of creeks and stuff like that in the fall. They could be bunched up and you can find you a big school of them, a late summer school of fish. Ooh, I got a bite and missed him. Oh, I know that was a fish. Should have been standing up is probably why I missed him. You always catch more fish standing up. Your hook sets are better, everything's better standing up. Setting down feels good though, don't it? <laughs> I slowed it down, just crawled it over the top of that grass. I'm talking crawled it over the top of that grass, and he got it. A good one, too. I mean, a nice one. I was crawling that bait. I mean, like a fishing a barely swimming a jig or something. Oh, Jimmy, get him in the boat. Oh, that's the biggest one. Golly, yeah, that was so cool. That was very, very cool. <laughs> Deep, smoothie lunker right at dark. The sun is setting already. The sun is already set. We still got a little daylight. 
and he had all three trebles. In fact, I don't see how he got them in them the way he has. That one's got to come out somehow. He's really not hooked, but it's wound, it's woven in in there, and somehow I got a, oh, there we go. That's a nice four and a half pounder right there. Mm -hmm. I tricked him into biting. I tricked him into biting. That little bait, that little smoothie was swimming along there, and it felt that grass, and it slowed down, just went. It's like a girl walking on ice, and the bass went, oh! Ha, 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 ha.